In this video, we're going to be talking about some parallelogram properties, um, and we're going to be applying these properties in um, numerical examples as well. So, <clears throat> the part of the flip book that you are going to lift, um, you're going to lift the first three. So, you're going to lift the title, quadrilaterals, and trapezoids. So, you should be writing on the parallelogram tab. Now, this next shape that we're working with um, is a different type of quadrilateral. So, we've dealt with quadrilaterals are at the very, very top of our family tree. Um, so, I'll just draw, you don't have to draw this, but we have quadrilaterals, right? We did trapezoids, and then under trapezoids, we had the isosceles trapezoids, right? Um, but now, we're, we're kind of going off of the trapezoid path. Um, we have a parallelogram being another type of quadrilateral. So we'll get a little bit more into that later, but just so you can kind of visually see, we are separating. So parallelograms really have nothing to do with trapezoids at all. It's going down its own path. Now, um, since it's another type of quadrilateral, we know we're inheriting all of the properties of that quadrilateral. Now, quadrilaterals were only these two properties right here. These are all quadrilateral properties. I spelled that so wrong. But you don't have to write these. What you can write instead is write all quadrilateral properties. Now, the reason I say this is because it kind of forces you to go study. You should know at this point, you should know the quadrilateral properties like the back of your hand. Um, because as we get into more complex examples, it's only going to get harder if you're not keeping yourself responsible for knowing these properties. Um, now, the new properties, what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram? Well, first, both pairs of opposite sides. So, obviously, we have a, our four-sided figure, right? We already know we're here. But what makes it a parallelogram is that both pairs of opposite sides are going to be parallel. So, both pairs, meaning... Remember what these arrows mean, right? These singular arrows mean that this side and this side are parallel, right? Um, and then we have these double arrows over here, which kind of show us that these two sides over here are parallel as well. Um, and the properties, along with the markings that go with them, they're kind of color-coded. So you can see um, number three is red, and the, the labeling for the parallel sides are also red. Um, the next one that we have is both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Um... And the last one, the third new property, is that opposite angles are congruent. Now, these are the angles that are across from one another. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. So, like, this angle and this angle here, these two angles with the singular arcs are across from one another. So, we know that if we, if we have that this figure is a parallelogram, we know that that's going to be true, right? Same thing goes for these pair of opposite angles. If we know that we have a parallelogram, then we know that those two are going to be congruent. Now, be careful here. You can't just look at a shape and assume the property. The question will have to tell you, hey, this is a parallelogram in order for you to use any of these three properties, right? Or if you're doing a proof and you're able to kind of conclude that you have a parallelogram, um, then again, you can use those three properties. But you can't just see a four-sided figure that looks like this and be like, oh, okay, it's a parallelogram. Um, it must be a parallelogram, right? So then, okay, this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to know that you have a parallelogram. Um, so some other two new properties, uh, so the, this first slide here, so you guys are going to draw two images. This first image is, um, kind of going with these three new properties. Um, and then there's going to be another image that goes along with the next two because these diagrams can get very confusing. So you want to make sure that you are being as neat as me right now. So you have your three new properties right here. This picture should be right next to that. Um, and then we're going to have two new properties uh, or two additional properties. And then this picture should be right next to that, right? We want to make sure we're organized. Um, I don't want to throw everything into one diagram because then it can get very confusing. Um, so the next uh, property is that same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, this is technically a property, but it comes from what we know about parallel lines. And I've uh, said this in the last video too. So if we know that these two sides are parallel, right, we should be thinking of our Z angles, um, our F angles, and our C angles or our U angles, right? So right here, I see this U shape or that C shape. Those are my same side interior angles. I know that those are going to add to 180, right? Um, same thing on the other side here. If these two lines are parallel, our C angles or our backward C um, is here. So I know that these two angles right here are going to add to 180, right? So that just comes from your prior knowledge of, of uh, parallel lines and some angle pairs that are created. Um, a really, really important one that the Regents loves to use 
is that the diagonals bisect each other. Now you need to know, we have to kind of tidy up on what bisect means. It means to cut in half um, or to cut into two congruent parts. So we need to, we're going to eventually be making equations from this and solving for missing pieces. But uh, in the second diagram, we have diagonals, right? Diagonals just go from corner to corner. Um, so we have two diagonals that are drawn in the image. And we know that they are cutting each other. They are being split. So at this intersection point, both diagonals are being split into congruent pieces. So this diagonal is broken up into this piece here and this piece here. And we know that those two pieces are equal. Um, and then this diagonal is broken up um, into this piece and this piece. And then we know that those two pieces are equal separately, right? That's why we have a singular tick mark um, for one diagonal. And then we have the double tick mark for the other pieces of the, of the second diagonal. So make sure you're organized. Um, if you have highlighters or different colored pens or markers to label this stuff, um, that would be wonderful. Um, we're going to get into how to prove a parallelogram in the next lesson, though, so make sure you have space to put that stuff down. Now here, we're going to get into two examples. These examples are not going to be done in your flipbook. These should be done um, in your note sheets because um, I don't want your flipbooks to get too crowded. So it says, uh, if one angle of a parallelogram is 70 degrees, find the degrees in the remaining three angles. So we have to think about the properties that we're using here. So it's going to be helpful to have your flipbook open, um, keep it open to the parallelograms right now. So to me, it's telling me that we're talking about angles. So I know that if I go back to my property page, I know that I'm going to be using a property that references angles. So let's see. So I know that all angles are going to add to 360. I know that opposite angles are congruent. Um, and that's it. So those are the two properties that we have. Um, so I know, I'm just going to jot these down. So I know all angles add to 360, add to equal 360, um, and opposite angles are congruent. Those are the two properties that we could be using right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, it, it, again, these just start, you might have different methods of doing it, but I just like to start building my, building my story, right? So I have, this is 70 degrees, and again, we can only say, we know it's a parallelogram, right? So if one angle of a parallelogram, that's how I know I'm allowed to use those properties. So I know that this angle is also going to be 70 degrees because opposite angles are congruent to one another. Um, with that being said, too, there's another pair of opposite angles. So, like, I'm just going to, if I label this as X, I know that this one has to be X as well, right? Um, wonderful. Okay, so now I know to find X, right, we want, we want all of the other three angles. So, I have one of them so far. But to find the other two angles, I can use this property here that all of the angles add to 360. So, if I add 70 plus 70 plus X plus X, if I add all of those angles up in the parallelogram... I know that I should get 360 degrees. Now we can combine our like terms. We can get 140 plus 2x equals 360. And then we subtract 140 on both sides to get 2x equals 120. And then if we divide both sides of the equation by 2, we would get that x equals 60. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, once I have a piece of info, I always like to throw it in my diagram as well. Um, and then we're done. So we have 70, 60, and 60. So these questions might be multi-step, um, but it all really starts figuring out what shape you have and what property of it you are using. So in the accompanying diagram of a uh, parallelogram, solve for variables x and y. Okay. So again, I know I have a parallelogram. So I can use the properties. I'm going to try to figure out which of the properties from the... Um, this slide that we're going to use. So it's not really talking about angles. It doesn't really give me info about the sides here in this case. Um, it's really giving me info about like the broken up pieces of the diagonal. So I don't really think I'm using any of these. Um, I, it's shouting out to me that I'm using this one. The fact that diagonals bisect each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that in here. So I know I'm using the property that diagonals bisect each other. And you don't have to always do this. I'm just doing it because you guys are kind of seeing this for the first time. Um, but it's good. You always still, even if you don't write it down, you always want to identify the property that you're going to be using. Um, 
So for me, the first diagonal that's standing out is this one. And the reason is because the pieces that it's broken up into, there's only one variable. Whereas if you look, I'll highlight this one in blue. If you look at the pieces of this diagonal, here we have x plus y, and here we have 5y. So that diagonal has x and y involved. That's just, uh, to, to me, that's like the second step. The first thing, I, I just want to look at the red diagonal right now. So again, when diagonals are bisecting each other, that means they're split into two congruent pieces. Split into two congruent parts, right? So that means that this first part over here, this 3x, should be equal to this part over here, to the 12. So here we just do algebra, and we get x equals 4. Um, and this kind of gets us a step in the right direction um, for solving for y. Because now, um, if we look here... We have x plus y, but now I already know what x is, right? So now I can rewrite this part of the diagonal. Instead of x plus y, I'm going to change that to 4 plus y. And then this piece here could stay as 5y. So now when we did that first diagonal, when we did, so I'll label that as diagonal 1. When we did diagonal 1 first, we were able to get a variable, and that kind of uh, took a step away or, or helped us get one further step um, into finding the next pieces. So now again, um, we should have 4 plus y, that's the first piece of the diagonal, right? That's going to be equal to the other piece here, which is 5y. And again, the reason is because we have a parallelogram and we know that the diagonals are splitting each other into two congruent parts. Um, so from here, uh, I'm going to subtract y, subtract y. So I get 4 equals 4y. Um, and if we divide both sides of the equation by 4, we're going to get that 1 equals y. So I always like to box my answers. We get x equals 4 and 1 equals y. Um, and then we are done. So again, um, all of these steps are going to involve figuring out the property you're using first um, and then applying that property, uh, making some equations and, and things like that. So uh, now we're going to get onto our family tree portion. So let's add onto that family tree. So lift up every single tab um, except the family tree one, obviously. Um, and you guys are going to add onto what you already have. So what you should already have, you should have quadrilaterals at the top. I'm not going to write the whole thing out. Then to the very right, you should have trapezoid. And then you should have isosceles trapezoid we already have that now new again um let's go more to the left here um not all the way to the left though don't go all the way to the left um this is going to be our parallelogram now i want you guys to make sure you have enough room because we're going to kind of go like this so to the left the parallelograms are going to break off into two pieces so make sure that you have enough space for that um and yeah, here we are so far. So sometimes this family tree can kind of help get a visual. Like you can see here that parallelograms don't really have anything to do with trapezoids, um, but they do have something to do as you go up. They do have something to do with our quadrilaterals, right? So it kind of helps uh, visually see what shapes are inheriting certain properties. All right.